Even if you don't know Representative Lucy McBath's face or name, you probably remember the tragedy that put her in the national spotlight. In 2012, her son Jordan Davis was murdered for playing loud music in his car in Florida. Her son's killer was found guilty and is now serving life in prison. After Jordan's death, McBath became an advocate, traveling the country in support of stricter gun rights, sometimes with other black women whose sons were also killed, a group known as the Mothers of the Movement. I lived in fear that my son would die like this. But it was after the Parkland shooting that McBath took the next step, running for a seat in a place she'd spent a lot of time testifying in, Congress, becoming the first African American to represent the 6th District in Georgia and in her first two months, a huge legislative win. Two bills that strengthen the background check system for gun sales are now on their way to the Senate. You know, it was very bittersweet. I was so excited, but it was very painful because the entire day, my, my foremost thought was Jordan. And so many families and victims like myself have been sitting in these hearings for years, begging our legislators to do the right thing. What kind of person was he? Oh my goodness, thank you for asking. You know, Jordan was just, he was a prankster. He always played practical jokes on me and I was so gullible, I would still always fall for it, you know. He was always kind of the center of the attention of all his friends and his friends were older than him and younger. He loved meeting people from different cultures and ethnicities, um, but he just was that kind of person that brought everybody together. The night that I got the call, I just my whole world went black. I mean, literally everything went black. I don't remember this, but they said I came running down the stairs and I was just saying, you know, Jordan is dead, Jordan is dead. And I felt like it doesn't matter what space our young black males are in, they're just not safe. And okay. everything that you teach them, everything that you protect them from and shield them from and teach them how to protect themselves. How do they ex exist with this, you know, sense of racism and discrimination and an implicit bias? How are they going to survive? What a credible candidate for any office nowadays is changing. Because we're the people, everyday people that have been championing for our communities We've been working in our municipalities. We've been doing the work already. So we have the experience, we have the tools, we have the know-how. And I mean, when you look at the Founding Fathers and, and the way that they wanted government to be run, it was about citizens exactly. who had different experiences from all over the country. Exactly. Maybe they didn't look like me and you at the time. Right, right, right. exactly. <laughs> but, but coming in and, and them running the government. Exactly, and that's who we are. You know, this freshman class were the most diverse that have ever been elected, the most numbers of number of women that have ever been elected, and women of color. We are our community, and we are the face of democracy as it looks now. It's diverse, and it's inclusive. On your campaign website, it said that you were protecting the Second Amendment rights of Georgia, but felt that there are things that we should be doing to change the way that we talked and felt about guns. What do you think about the relationship the United States has with guns? The relationship that the United States have, has with guns is a love affair. We are a nation of guns. And I honestly don't believe we won't ever be. You know, it's become part of who we are as a culture. My father was a hunter. My oldest nephew was a sniper in the Marines. I remember my father coming home at night after he'd been hunting and taking my mom screaming, Lucian, let me put the newspaper down on the table before you skin that rabbit. <laughs> you know, so yeah, yeah. these are the kinds of things that I'm not against guns, but there are law-abiding gun owners and law enforcement and, and, peop and people in the military that believe that we have an extremist gun culture that has to be reckoned with. What do you have to say to black moms, and all moms, but specifically black moms who are every day fighting to make sure that what happened to your son, what happened to, to the other mothers of the movement, doesn't happen to them. What, what, what kind of 
hope should they have? What I say to them all the time is that you cannot transfer that fear that you have onto your children. You have to teach them how to stand strong, even in the midst of all of this chaos and trouble. But it's our responsibility to equip them to do that. And that's what we have to be teaching our children, not to be afraid. In the midst of everything that's happening in this chaotic world, not to be afraid. Go forth, stand tall. You are good enough. Believe in that despite the odds. Just stand.